this weekend, next weekend was going to be concerts and. Okay, am I in the Basketball. toilet? Yeah. Am I in the toilet? Um, dude, we'll, did we'll you maybe just, be able to play. You just did number two later? while you're podcasting. That is. It's not above me to take a shit while I'm doing the podcast. Chopped up heads, thick heads, and blood. To me, riffs are fucking timeless. You've got generations of people going to see them. It's our best album so far. The fans have been asking for it. They've been asking for it for years. I would listen to it over and over and over again today. It's like music we play, man. You're either going to like it or not. There are satanic bands. Some of them really aren't. We're playing the craziest drunken debauchery show we've played probably ever. It is not a condition to be doing a podcast. You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. We're back. The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Episode 64. March 2020. In the midst of a pandemic, we are recording another podcast, Brian. In honor of our pandemic friend, I am drinking a Corona. Just to show my appreciation for, you know, how much devastating the world. <laughs> so, dude, so. tonight we were supposed to be in St. Louis, Missouri at an amazing show with Dragon Force featuring friend of the podcast Mark Hudson and yeah. Unleash the Archers with friend of the podcast Brittany Slay. She is my favorite well, I really can't say that. I also like uh, Into Eternity's um, Amanda Kiernan. But Brittany's one of my favorite female singers. Oh, wow. She brings the power. She brings the voice. That's awesome. How many times have you seen them? You can suck it, Zodi. I, I, I can't believe you're bringing that shit up again. I mean, you definitely wouldn't have missed an opportunity to see them in, in Cincinnati when they were playing in a tiny little pub. Such a dick. You have to bring that up. That's like, if I had a disability, that's like you keep bringing up the disability. You keep talking about my Unleash the Archer disability. It's ridiculous. So, dude, we are in the midst of the corona pandemic, and this sucks because all the awesome concerts have been canceled. Dude, you know, my favorite saying, one of my favorite sayings is some things are worth a butt whooping. I think a little coronavirus is worth a butt whooping to see some bands that are kick ass. I mean, you're missing a bunch of shows because of this, right? Yeah, I had for months had planned seeing this show, Dragon Force Unleash the Archers on Saturday, and then the next Friday, Insomnium, Omnium Gatherum, and Seven Spires. I I couldn't be more disappointed, man. This is just it's like a it's like a kick to the crotch times twenty. Dude, I love me some Seven Spires, you know, Omnium Gatherum. Yeah. Emo bands are okay, but it's not my thing. What sucks is that these guys put put it out there. They spend a lot of their own money, and they go on tour. They live in hotels. They live in vans and buses. And they plan this. They love it. They're dedicated. And then something like this comes up, and it just turns to shit. And all that work is kind of, I don't know, left on the road, if you will. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. After the break, first, our initial track we have this evening, Hellbiter by Ambush off their 2020 album, Infidel.
Swedish traditional metal lords Ambush with Hellbiter from the album Infidel, released just this year. Oh, there's nothing neutral about that song, dude. They are on the side of the metal god, and deservedly so. I love that song. I'm not a huge fan of the throwback metal, but if you had to push me, Ambush is pretty damn awesome. Oh, it was a definite ambush. A wonderful beating that I took in the name of metal. So, dude, I think the crushing thing about these cancellations is for these bands that are coming from overseas, Dragon Force flew here from the UK, and fortunately, they have a sold-out set of concerts, so they're going to be back, and they're going to honor the tickets. Insomnium and Omnium Gatherum, they were just on the first night of their show, You know, they were coming from Finland, and the fact that they had booked travel, booked buses, paid for all this in advance, they are in a world of hurt, man. And it scares me, the example that Insomnium and Omnium Gatherum have had, that there will be fewer and fewer bands from overseas who are going to take the risk of booking shows in America. Dude, it's like the fucking 1980 Olympic team. I mean, you train all your life for this one moment, and then it's taken away from you. You don't lose it. It's not their fault. They didn't do anything. They didn't play a shitty show, and the promoter, it's, hey, America is sick, and you can't play. you got to go home. And I understand the reason, but my God, can you imagine that type of disappointment is not easily conquered? I mean, they literally took to social media and said our bands are on the edge of financial ruin if you can buy a t-shirt if you can give us just a donation man that's important to us because given the outlay of money that we've had to make to set up this north american tour that's now called off we're not sure how we move forward as musical acts dude crushing a dream is a terrible thing and the horrible thing is there's really no one to blame. I mean, how do you, uh, you know, it just fucking sucks, man. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm hoping that the promoters will step up and somehow manage a way to get these folks back over here or back on the road. And then when that happens, here's the thing. Metalheads have got to fucking show up. They have got to be there for bands that are able to get back. They've got to stand up at the doors. They've got to get on the barrier. They've got to buy T-shirts and albums and say, hey, we're there to support you. You would think that something like prayer might work, but after praying and praying and praying, you realize (laughs) there's no one who's even listening. There's there's no God out there. (laughs) You pray to the metal gods, but it doesn't seem to work, man. (laughs) Hey, maybe God can't answer those kind of prayers, man. God does not intervene in the lives of the metal, man. If you pray to him, he always answers. I mean, <laughs> you you are definitely going to purgatory for a little while if nothing else, man. You may go straight to hell, but you're definitely going to hit purgatory for about 10,000 years. But, man, yeah. this, I mean, honestly, Brian, I have a concern about the effect of this on the entire concert industry. These venues that allow metal bands to play, which are the smaller venues, by and large, places that from 100 to 1,500 people. I'm concerned if, if they're shut down for the next couple of months. We've been doing this podcast for five years, and we have seen so many of those places go under, even in good economic times. When bad economic times come, what's the, uh, what's the chances that these places that allow metal bands to play will even be open? Well, I mean, I mean, uh, some of these bands, some of these promoters, some of these venues, they live basically what can be called paycheck to paycheck. I mean, you look at like Terry Harper Productions. They try as hard as they can to get metal bands into these venues in the local area. Louisville is a big, big ticket item for them. But you know that they're missing shows, dude. And for a, for, for a promoter like that, that makes his bread and butter off of small bands and local tours and month-long tours, he has got to be thinking, holy shit, how am I going to survive this? Because if your entire 
catalog is gone for a month, how are you going to make it? I'll look at our friends, friends of the podcast of Serpents, who had planned, beginning in April, a tour of the southeastern U.S. That's probably gone by the wayside. So many young local bands who are trying to bust out, their opportunity is basically fucked now. I almost think it would be better to be a smaller band right now that's not well known. You can catch a gig whenever you can. But, I mean, look at Three Tremors. They're putting out a second album. Uh, Death Dealers working on a third album. All of this happens in a climate where you know that nobody can show up at the venue. It's, it's going to be virtually impossible to get your music out there. Even on social media, you know, social media doesn't pay you anything. They have to make their living off touring, and touring just fucking sucks right now. No, well, dude, that. I'm bummed. I had an amazing March planned, and now it's all gone to fuck. You know as well as I do. My Dragon Force Unleash the Archers show, was it had lit a spark under my ass that hadn't been lit in a while, ready to go, and now it's canceled. There's no telling when, when they're going to kick back up with the shows, dude. I mean, seriously. Oh, fuck, there, there's I know. No dude, to this well, yet. dude, no, I, and I, my, like, again, I literally, I had been, this seven-day period when I was going to see these two shows, like, I've been waiting for this for yeah. months. Well, we do have some awesome music to listen to in the meantime. From the 2020 EP of the same title, here's Heavy Thrasher's Lutharo with Wings of Agony.
That was the track Wings of Agony by Canadian meddlers Lutharo from their 2020 EP Wings of Agony. Dude, I, I, I've got to say, I've got to hand it to the Canadians. They kick ass when it comes to some decent metal, man. And this is another example of how those bands in the extreme North American continent really lay waste to some good music. So, dude, we haven't had an opportunity to talk about this, but the year 2020, the end of one decade, the beginning of another, and yet another decade that the 1980s falls into irrelevance. Like, yeah, why I would even... most metal fans today weren't even alive during the 1980s? I think that the 1980s are an irrelevant decade and one that can really be passed over in history. This is why you're the biggest dick in heavy metal music. You grew up in the 80s. You, 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 you cut your teeth on 80s metal, and now all of a sudden you're too good for it. I promise you, that music is making a comeback. It's what's funny. It's on the oldies but goodies station, and it's still more popular than most of the shit you listen to. Well, it's on the oldies, that's for sure. It's really old and irrelevant. Kids, no! Kids today are it's like... It's on what? oldies and irrelevant station. Kids today are like, that's something my grandpa listened to. If I'm visiting him in the home, they may be playing that shit over Muzak. But, like, real people don't listen to that bullshit. Dude, and that's, the, that's, that's the thing that you should understand. That the Muzak and the people headbanging to that shit out headbang you and your newfangled symphonic operatic music way more than you do. Did you just say you're headbanging to Muzak? Because yeah, if you did, thing. I think that says everything about what you think about metal. Well, I, I, what I think is it says everything about the music that you listen to these days. Dude, the music you listen to today could be listened to in the 1200s by the Italian operatic visitors. It's the same shit that's going on back then. And people are just as excited about it today as they were back then. They sit in the chairs, they listen, they experience a little bit of emotion, but they don't headbang a lot. Oh, I would go beyond that, Brian. It's not just the Middle Ages. Actual metal, which you know nothing <laughs> about, goes back to the Paleolithic period, when folk metal originated, when people were beating oh on the drum God. and playing the the initial flute, and and the, oh the first God. examples of stringed instruments. That is where metal originated, around the campfire. You and your fucking hurdy-gurdy music can all go to hell because it has nothing to do with headbanging. Nothing. It's got everything to do with monkeys running around with a cup in their hand collecting money and nothing to do with a concert where you stand at the barrier and headbang till you sweat and pass out and you're going to be carried over the barrier by a 350-pound security guard named Mo who doesn't like the music, but he shows up because it pays a lot of money. If Mo is there in the 80s, he's probably a douchebag, and so are the people on the other side of the barrier. Man, the 80s... Damn it, don't you 80s, make fun of Mo. He, he loves the music. The 80s were the worst era, in culture generally, but in music specifically. If the 80s had never taken place... Our culture, and heavy metal music in particular, would be much better off. Dude, I was there. I saw you. I know what you did in the 80s. And here's my question, dude. When is the next flip the switch for Gomfog? When do you finally say the next fad comes through and you're no longer going to be interested in symphonic metal or female-fronted bands, which is a, which is a shame, by the way, because there's some great female-fronted bands. When are you going to say, oh, that was just a fad and it's old school and I no longer listen to it? Because I know it's coming because you have no loyalty whatsoever in your blood. I mean, the fad is 80s and, and, the, and the terrible bands that played during that era. I'm so sad for oldsters like you. Dude, me and my broken hip head banging are 10 times more metal than all the shit you listen to right now. Nowadays, you just explore your feelings and your emotions, and you raise your hand occasionally. You don't even know what headbanging is. You jump up and down a little bit, but not a lot. Go to an actual 80s metal show, which, by the way, I'm going to. I'm going to go see Motley Crue 
and Def Leppard and Poison and Joan Jett. Fucking ten times more metal than anything you're going to go see. Motley Crue, who invented 80s metal, dude. If you want to go see a commercial hard rock show, I think that's a great example. But I'm going to wait for another metal show. I think you meant emo show, you know, where you explore bob haircuts on boys and black cloth zippered uh, sweaters. But I don't think you meant metal. Our final song for this show is by American West Coast progressive death metalers Hematoxin from their new album Restructure the Molded Mind. This is Corrupted Flesh. heard the track Corrupted Flesh by Hematoxin. Dude, you know a hematoxin is a chemical in the blood that breaks down tissue. Well, this broke down all my non-metal tissue. It certainly is something that got the poison running through my veins there. Dude, given our situation right now, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, what are your plans for the remainder of 2020? On the outside chance that we survive, 
I plan to go to shows. That's what I want to do, man. I'm close to Clarkson. I'm close to Nashville. Exodan always has kick-ass folks. I'm going to start going back to shows. I don't know how many actual live shows that we'll have in the next coming months, but I'm going to try to listen to as much real metal, that is, metal from the new millennia after 2000, not back in the 90s or, God forbid, the awful 80s. Real yeah, metal. I plan on listening to my 80s metal louder than your 90s and 2000s can play it. So there Real you go. metal. I'll be listening to a lot of that, and we will have a number of artist interviews as well as some amazing album reviews coming up on the Great Metal of AP. Looking forward to some album reviews, man. I love new music. Check out all our content on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And you can follow the podcast on all major social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you have something to contribute to the debate, a topic for the show, or maybe your band has a song you'd like us to play, you can contact us by emailing thegreatmetaldebate at gmail.com. Until the next time, sell your soul for metal and defend it till your dying day.